Hi guys. So today we're going to be talking about intervals. We're going to talk about how to construct them and how to identify them. Okay, so intervals um, are, the, are the distance between two different notes. Um, and we can talk about melodic intervals as they occur in time in a melody, like in this case from D up to G or G to F. We can also talk about harmonic intervals, intervals that occur simultaneously. So for instance, from D up to F or D up to G here. Intervals are defined based on two things. We define them by size and by quality. So I've got a couple examples here of some intervals. So the first part of the interval name describes the quality of the interval. So for instance, in this case, I have a major interval, a perfect, a minor, a diminished, or an augmented interval. The second part of the interval describes the size of that interval. So in this case, I've got a major third, I've got a fifth, I've got a sixth, I've got a fourth, or another sixth. Okay, so to construct intervals, we always start by constructing the size first. So let's start with that. All right, so when we construct size, we always start with a note that's given, and then we count up or down from that note. So if I want to build a second, for instance, um, I start on the note that's here, and I count up to, starting with that note, one, two gives me a second or a fifth one two three four five or a third again starting on that note one two three and the same thing goes if i'm building intervals below descending intervals i start in this note and then i count down seven starting here i count down four or down a second from here so one thing you might notice now that i've got them all in the staff is that Intervals that are odd intervals are always on the same line or the same space. So my thirds, my fifths, my second, my sevenths, these are all in the same line or space. Even intervals are always on a different line or a different space as a way to just quickly identify them. All right, so now that we've got the size of the interval, the second part of it, we're gonna look at defining the quality of the interval, the major, the perfect, or the minor. To do this, we're going to use the major scale. So if you know your major key signatures or major scales, then you're set. So I'm going to give you an example. So if I take the C major scale and I look at any given note above the tonic note or above scale degree one, each of those intervals are all what are called major or perfect intervals. So for example, if I start on C, and I go up to scale degree two, I get a major second. Up to the third scale degree, a major third, a perfect fourth, a perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and then perfect octave. So from the bottom note of any scale, everything above it in the major scale is major or perfect. Perfect intervals are really just another name for major intervals that are very specific to either the, the fourth and to the fifth, to the octave and to the unison. It's just something that you're going to kind of have to remember. There's no such thing as a major fourth or a major fifth. Instead, we always say perfect fourth, perfect fifth. So remember fourths, fifths, octaves, unisons, these are always perfect. And the other intervals we say major. All right, so this is actually really useful because what this means is that if you know your major scales, you know your major key signatures, then you can build any major or perfect interval just by thinking of that key. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say I want to build a major third. So I start by building the size of the interval first. So I need first a third. So I start on E and I go up three. One, two, three gives me a G. And then I know if I want it to be a major or a perfect interval, I just need to think in the key of E major. I know that the third scale degree in the key of E has to fit within the key of E major. So the key of E major has four sharps. So I apply this key signature to the G, which gives me a G sharp, and now I've got a major third. All right, so let's try a few examples. So I've got a string of intervals here and some interval names. So I'm gonna start by building first the size of the interval. So if I want a major third above this, I first need to build a third above A. So I count up three, one, two, three. Okay, now the second step, I need to think of what is in the key of A major. Okay, well I know in the key of A major, I have three sharps. I've got an F, a C, and a G. 
So I've got a C sharp in the key signature, which means that if I want a major third in the key of A, C is sharp. So I raise up the note. Okay, let's try the next one. So I want a perfect fourth above F. So I start by building the size of the interval first. So I need to count up four, one, two, three, four. And then I need to think of what is the key signature for F major. So I know the key signature for F major has one flat, a B flat. So if I want this note to fit in the key signature, in the key of F, B is flat, so I lower the B, and I've got a perfect fourth. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, so in this case, I want a major seventh above B. So again, I start by building the size, so I count up seven from B, which gives me some type of A for a seventh. And then I think, need to think of what is in the key signature for B major. In the key signature for B major, I have five sharps. In the key of B, a is a sharp, I've got it right in the key signature, so I raise it up. All right, well, this is great, but what if the bottom note isn't a major key? So for instance, what if you end up with a kind of strange note, like a B double flat, and you need to build a major third above that? So the trick here is just to adjust the accidental to make it something that you can work with. So forget about the key of B double flat. Think instead in terms of the key of B flat. Just subtract a flat and think about building a major third above B flat. Okay, so if I do that, again, I start by building a third. So I count up one, two, three. So I'm gonna end up with a D. And if I want it to fit into the key of B flat major, I think about what the key to signature for B flat major is. Okay, so it's got a B flat and an E flat, two flats. So D, that fits, this is a major third. Okay, so now, my original, my original note though was a B double flat, right? So to get from here to here, I subtracted a flat. So if I want a major third above B double flat, then I just need to add one more flat to each of those notes. So whatever the operation was, if you subtracted a flat, then you have to add a flat back on at the very end. If you subtract two flats, then add two flats back on. Let's try another example. So let's say I've got C double sharp, and I wanna build a major sixth above a C double sharp. So forget about the double sharp, build it above C. Build a major sixth above C instead. Okay, so in the key of C major, I start by counting up six, I get to an A, the key of C major has nothing in it, so A is a major sixth above C. Okay, so I subtracted two sharps, a double sharp, so I need to add two sharps. So I add two sharps to the C, I add two sharps to the A. So just imagine sort of covering up the note, if it's a scary note, just cover up the accidental, build your note, and then add it back on at the end. All right, so if you've got your major intervals, then you are set. From here, to build any of the other intervals, we're just gonna adjust the accidentals. So let me show you what I mean. So if I start, if I wanna build any kind of third, I'm gonna start by building first a major third, and then I'm either gonna raise or I'm gonna lower the accidental. So if I wanna build a minor, third instead, I'm gonna lower the top note by a half step. So major, if I lower it, it becomes minor. And then if I make it even smaller yet, I lower the top note again. Think about diminishing. When you diminish something, you make it smaller. Then the interval becomes diminished. And if I lower it again, it becomes doubly diminished. And I could get really nuts. And I could even lower it again, and it could become triply diminished. But of course, you don't see that very often. Um, but this is the idea. So if I want to build the same thing, uh, a minor sixth, I'm going to start by building a major sixth and I'm gonna lower it a half step. If I want to be a, build a diminished sixth, I'm gonna build a major sixth and then lower it and then lower it again, so two half steps. Uh, when you augment something, you make it bigger, right? So if you take any major interval and you augment it, so think about pulling the top note up to make the interval bigger, we raise the top note a half step. So if you want an augmented third, you start by building a major third, and then you raise the accidental a half step, so from B to B sharp. And if you want it doubly augmented, you raise it again. Now, perfect intervals are just a little bit different. Now, remember, these are the intervals. These are your fourths, your fifths, your octaves, and your unison. So any interval that is a perfect interval, there is no minor version of that interval. So a perfect fifth, if we lower the top note a half step, we don't get a minor fifth. There's no such thing as a minor fifth, just like there's no such thing as a, as a major fifth. If you diminish, you make a smaller a perfect interval, you go straight to diminished. And then you do it again, you get a doubly diminished. 
The augmented works exactly the same though. So if you have a perfect interval and you augment it, you go up a half step to augment it. So this is important, right? So if you have a diminished third, then you need to go down two half steps. But if you have a diminished fifth, or a fourth, you're only going to go down one half step. So you have to kind of keep those two intervals straight. Okay, so let's try this. Let's try a few examples. All right, so let's start with some minor intervals first. So in this case, I'm going to build a minor sixth above G. So I'm going to start first by building the major sixth, right? So go back to my spot here. Okay, so if I want a major sixth, first thing I do, right, is I, I do the size first. So I count up sixth, and that gives me this. And if I want to make it major, I need to think in the key of G, what is E? In the key of G, I've got one sharp. E is natural, so I've got a major sixth. That's perfect. Now, to make this interval minor, I'm going to lower it a half step, right? So instead of E, if I lower E a half step, it becomes an E flat. So now I've got a minor sixth. Okay, so let's try the next one. So now I want a minor third above C sharp. So first thing, I'm gonna build a major third first and then adjust it. So a third above C is some kind of E. To make that major, I need to think in the key of C sharp major, right? So in the key of C sharp major, everything is sharp. So that E in the key of C sharp major would be an E sharp. And actually it doesn't even want me to do this. Let me just add it in like this. Okay, it would become an E sharp. So that right now is a major third. So to make this minor, I need to lower it a half step so that E sharp is going to become an E natural. And now I've got a minor third. Okay, so let's try one more. So I want a minor seventh above B flat. So again, I'm first going to start by building a major seventh above B flat. So a seventh above B is an A. In the key of B flat major, A is natural, right? I've got B flat and E flat. So this is right now a major seventh. So to turn this into a minor seventh, I have to lower the top note a half step so that A becomes an A flat instead. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's try some diminished and augmented intervals. These ones are just a little bit trickier. Okay, so here we go. So in this case, I want a diminished seventh above B. So again, I'm gonna start by building first a major seventh above B. So a major seventh above B, first I need a seventh, which would give me an A. In the key of B, A is sharp, right? So this would become, if it's a major seventh, it would be A sharp. That's right now a major seventh. So to make this diminished, remember I have to go down two half steps, right? From major, to minor, to diminished. So A sharp down a half step is A, down another half step would be A flat. And it has to be A flat, it cannot be a G sharp. If it was a G, it'd be some kind of sixth, right? It wouldn't be a seventh. So you gotta be kind of careful. We can't change the size of the interval when I adjust it. Okay, let's try another one. So now I've got an A flat and I want a diminished fifth above it. Now remember fifths are perfect intervals, right? Fourths, fifths, octaves, unisons. So I'm gonna start by building a perfect fifth. So a fifth above A is some type of E, and the key of A flat major, E is flat, right? So A flat to E flat, right now what I've got is a perfect fifth. Now remember when you go, when you've got a perfect interval, to get to a diminished interval, we actually only go down one half step, right? Because there is no such thing as a minor fifth. So instead of going down two like I did here, I'm only gonna go down one. So if I've got an E flat, this is actually gonna become an E double flat, which I see it's not even gonna let me do the easy way here. So E flat's going to become an E double flat instead. And again, remember this is important. It's not a D. It's got to be an E double flat because I don't want to change the size of the interval. It still needs to be some kind of fifth. Okay, augmented intervals. So augmented intervals, remember this is just a half step above whatever it was. And the same thing goes for major and for perfect. So I start by building a major third if I wanted augmented third. So a third up would be A in the key of F. A is natural, right? Because I only have one flat in the key. So to make this augmented, I need to raise this up a half step. So A is gonna become A sharp, 
instead. So now I've got an augmented third. All right, one more. So now I want an augmented fourth above G flat. So again, I'm going to start by building a perfect fourth. So a fourth above G is some type of C. In the key of G flat major, what is C? You guys think of that? What is it? G flat major has got how many flats? It's got six, right? So in the key of G flat major, I have B, E, A, D, G, C flat. So C is going to be flat if I want a perfect fourth. So I would have a C flat. Oops. Now to augment that interval, I'm going to raise it up a half step, right? So instead of C flat, I'm going to have C natural instead. So I can get rid of this act this uh, flat and now I've got a C natural. All right, so we're set with constructing intervals above notes, but what if I want to build an interval below a given note? So let's say I give you an E flat and I say build me a minor third below that or build me a major seventh below the E flat instead. So one way that we do this, a good trick for it, is actually to use interval inversions to do it. So let's pause on that question for just a moment and talk about inversions. So when you invert something, you're flipping something around an axis. So imagine I've got something here. If I want to invert this, I flip it around the same axis. So the same thing goes for intervals. So if I have an interval that goes up from C up to E, a major third, and I flip that interval around that same axis around C, instead of going up to E, I'm going to go from C down to E. So C to E, I invert the interval, I get C down to E as the inversion. Or C up to D flat, the inversion would be C down to D flat. C up to G, the inversion would be C down to G, and so forth. Okay, so one thing you might notice if you're looking at this is that when I invert any given interval, and I look at the quality, I look at the actual size and quality of those intervals, it always adds up to nine. So three plus six sums to nine. Two and seven is nine. Five and four is nine. Three and six is nine. So anytime you invert an interval, the inversion of that interval always sums to nine. The second thing you might notice is that the quality flips. So if you've got a major interval and you invert it, you're gonna end up with a minor interval and vice versa. If you have a minor interval and you invert it, you get a major interval. Augmented becomes diminished or diminished becomes augmented. Perfect intervals stay exactly the same. Okay, so to sum this up then, if you want to find the inversion of any given interval, so you're gonna try this out in just a moment. If I give you a major third and I say, what is the inversion of a major third? Then you have to think, okay, well, three plus what is nine, right? It sums to nine, three plus six is nine. So it's some kind of sixth. A perfect fourth, the inversion, four plus what is nine? Four plus five. A diminished seventh, seven plus what is nine? It'd be two. The second step then is to flip the quality of the interval. So if it's a major interval, it's gonna become minor, minor is gonna become major. So if I have a major third, the inversion of that is gonna be a minor sixth. Perfect intervals stay the same. If it's perfect, it stays perfect. So if I've got a perfect fourth, it's, the inversion is gonna be a perfect fifth. And then augmented and diminished intervals flip. So if it's augmented, it becomes diminished, diminished becomes augmented. So if I have a diminished seventh and I invert it, then I'm gonna have an augmented second. All right, so if you've got your intervals down, you got your inversions down, I should say, then you can build any interval you want below. So here are the steps then. So you're gonna start first, let's say I've got a minor, th I wanna build a minor third below E. The first thing you're gonna do is ask yourself, okay, well, what is the inversion of a minor third? The inversion of a minor third would be a major sixth, right? So build a major sixth above instead. So I start with E, I build a sixth above in the key of E, C is sharp because I have four sharps. So a major sixth above is C sharp, which means then if I want a minor third below, I'm just gonna flip this C down below the staff instead. And that's it. Okay, so let's try a few examples. All right, so let's say I wanna build a diminished seventh below this E flat. So I'm gonna start by asking, okay, what is the inversion of a diminished seventh? So the inversion would be a augmented second, right? So we build an augmented second instead. So 
I'm going to go up an augmented second above this. So a major second above E flat would be F. And if I want to make that augmented, I need to raise it so F is going to become sharp instead. And so then what I need to do is just flip that F sharp instead of top. You just flip it down to the bottom instead. So just invert it. If it was up, take it down. Okay, so same thing here. So I want to build now a minor sixth below this note. So instead, I'm going to build the inversion above. So um, the inversion of a minor sixth would be a major third, right? Okay, so a major third above B would be a D. In the key of B, D is sharp. So a major third would be D sharp. Sorry. Okay, so now I'm just going to flip the note below. So instead of it being up, I'm going to move this D sharp down instead, down here. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Okay, so you guys give this a shot in your assignment. So I want you now to flip back to, to your musician assignment and do the intervals below section. And then swing on back here. All right, so we've got interval construction down. But now let's say I've got some intervals and I need to identify what they are instead. So we're actually just going to use the same process we did except in reverse. So let's say I've got, I've got this particular interval here from A up to D sharp and I need to determine what it is. Well, I know it's some kind of fourth, right? If I count up, it's some kind of fourth. The question is, well, what is, what is a perfect fourth? And then we're just going to see how this varies, how this differs from a perfect fourth. So let's just imagine first what's a perfect fourth above A. Well, it'd be some kind of D. And the key of A, D would be natural, right? So that's a perfect fourth. So the difference between here and here to go from D up to D sharp is to raise it up one half step. So if you raise a perfect interval up one half step, it becomes augmented, right? So this is an augmented fourth. Okay, let's try another one. Let's say here I've got this interval from E up to C flat and I need to identify it. Okay, so I know that this is some kind of sixth, right? So I'm going to start by just building a major six. Think about what is a major six and how does this differ? Okay, so up a six would be C. All right, so in the key of E major, C is what? C is sharp, right? So if I'm in the key of E major, C is sharp, so E up to C is a major sixth. Okay, so to get from here to here, what has to happen? If you have C sharp and you go down a half step, it becomes C natural. Down another half step, it becomes C flat. So if you take a major interval and you go down two half steps, it becomes major, becomes minor, becomes diminished. So E up to C flat is a diminished sixth. Okay, all right, so you guys give this a try. So start by thinking about the major interval first and then see how the accidental gets adjusted from the major interval. And then this is, this is it. This is the final section and you'll be all finished with your assignment.